Yeah, yeah. Everybody hates Tesla. Nothing new. But we're up about 190K percent. That's a lot of percentage, but let's get active. Let's get started. It's electric. Imagine waking up to find your investment has skyrocketed by 190,000%. Sounds like a fever dream, doesn't it? But for early Apple investors, this isn't just a fantasy, it's a reality. Now, what if I told you that might be another tech giant on the same trajectory? Who's that? It can only be one person. Tesla. Felix here, and today we're diving into a rather intriguing claim I stumbled upon while scrolling through the deep, dark world of social media. It suggests that Tesla, yes, Tesla, might still be in its infancy when it comes to stock growth potential. Now, now that's going to be true, guys. The artificial intelligence has not really taken off. Once that hits revenue, once the energy department really takes off, once the factories come up to full ramp on our battery production, I'm talking about mega packs, not even just walls, but mega packs, not power walls, not solar. I'm talking these mega packs. Once that fully kicks in with the factory being built out in Shanghai, oh, it's going to get ridiculous. Once Cortex comes online, it's going to get ridiculous. Now, I know you're thinking Tesla early, but it's current market cap. Surely that ship is set. Better hold that thought because the numbers we're about to explore might just change your perspective. On this. You see, my trusted golden retriever, Winston, who has quite the nose for sniffing out solid investment opportunities, brought this post to my attention. And I must say, it's got me rather excited. We'll be comparing Tesla's growth to tech giants like Apple and Amazon dissecting the numbers and exploring whether there is any merit to this bold claim. But instead of a bold claim, I want to tell you the truth. And the truth is our teaching portfolio is already up 80% this year, not quite 190,000, but not. All right, here he goes. He's going to try to sell you something real quick, as they always do. <laughs> took the infrastructure Amazon built for its own operations, formed not just the mobile phone industry, but also the gaming, photography, and countless other sectors. Now let's sprinkle in some Amazon. In 1994, Jeff Bezos wasn't just starting an online bookstore. He was laying the groundwork for a retail revolution. Amazon's disruption came in waves. First, they changed how we shop for books. Then they expanded. So first, they changed how we shop for books. Tesla changed how we shop for cars. The two, well, everything, really. Amazon's a real game changer. Three words. Amazon. Now... They moved from just selling books to basically selling everything. So they moved from just selling cars to selling energy, the battery, every part, vertical integration. Web services. AWS took the infrastructure Amazon built for its own operations and offered it to other businesses. Sad then they took it. That infrastructure, IAAS, offered it as a service and then took off. Tesla will do the same thing with artificial intelligence. Only startups could access world-class computing power without massive upfront investments. This move didn't just disrupt retail, it's transformed how businesses operate in the digital age. And now the final ingredient in our disruption recipe, Tesla. Elon Musk and team didn't just set out to build electric cars, they aimed to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. Tesla's approach was multi-pronged. Electric vehicles, autonomous driving, and energy storage solutions. Tesla's disruption goes far beyond just cars. They're challenging the entire automotive industry model, direct to consumer sales, over the air updates, integrated renewable energy solutions that even my cat is excited about. This is Tallulah. Were you working on the research on this one? Are you taking full credit? Mm, I think so. Now, Tesla is essentially redefining what it means to be a car company in the century. From this perspective, just as Apple grew beyond phones and Amazon beyond books, Tesla's growth story is far from over. The company's integrated approach to sustainable energy, from generation to storage to consumption, positions it at the forefront of multiple high growth industries. Multiple high growth industries, not only just automobiles, because we can kind of skip that and not count that as a high growth industry, but artificial intelligence and energy, and definitely not just generation of energy through the solars, but also storage of energy, which is something to be added on to the infrastructure. The current Energy security 
is not good enough for where we need to go in the future. One, to keep up with data centers, and two, to keep up with artificial intelligence. So we have a choice. And our choice is to bow out the race and allow other nations to become supreme in artificial intelligence and also increase their energy security while we just sit back and hang tight. Now, Tesla is at the forefront of energy and artificial intelligence. And we need both, and especially energy, in order to produce the energy that's necessary to move into the age of information, the age and the revolution of artificial intelligence. We already need massive amounts of improvements into our current infrastructure, just like everybody else does in all nations across the world. And so the storage capabilities that the battery and the mega pack provides really changes the game for our fundamental, most important infrastructure in America, in any country, is its electricity grid. Let's continue. And let's not forget robots. Not continue, because we want advertisements. I want that couch right there. So let's delve a little deeper into how exactly Tesla resembles the early days of Apple and Amazon on their ways to build their own empire, brick by brick. Elon Musk and team started with the high-end roadster, proving that electric vehicles could be sexy and fast. Then came the Model X, S, 3, and Y, each expanding their market reach. But Tesla's ecosystem goes beyond cars. They're integrating energy generation through solar panels, energy storage with power vaults, and even AI with self-driving technology. Te and now he also left out mega packs. Those are industrious level energy storage. Tesla is building a complete energy ecosystem from generation to storage to consumption. So what's our thesis here? It's simple. Tesla, like Apple and Amazon before it, isn't just creating products, it's building an ecosystem. And if history is any guide, the real value explosion happens when these ecosystems reach critical mass. Consider this. The electric vehicle market is projected to grow at about 29% a year until 2030. The renewable energy market is expected to reach 1.9 trillion by 2030, and the AI market it's forecast to hit 1.8 trillion by 2030. Tesla is positioned at the intersection of all these high growth markets. And we have forgotten the robots, I agree. Just as Apple grew beyond computers and Amazon beyond books, Tesla's growth story could be far from over. Of course, this doesn't mean that Tesla's path forward is guaranteed, like training Winston to fetch the newspaper instead of eating it. There will be challenges. But the potential, well, that's what makes the story so intriguing. Let's talk about vertical integration here for a moment. Imagine. Now, before he moves into vertical integration, I think that the potential is serious and the potential is there. You guys have to look at the track record of Elon Musk. We're not talking about the track record of a guy coming out of nowhere. It's the same track record that we kind of believed in Tim Cook. And Steve Jobs, the same track record that we believed when it came down to Jeff Bezos. And a lot of people did not agree. And a lot of people did not see at that time that Amazon was moving beyond books. A lot of people did not see that Amazon was moving beyond actual retail products. They were moving into IT. Why are they selling software? That's not their business model. It's the highest generating revenue that they have today, currently. But they didn't see. They didn't see the vision. And especially, I'm pretty sure it's what people are going to say about these little funky watches that Apple has right now, this wellness that they're on. Oh, yeah, man, what's up with the watches? You sell phones and, and, and computers. Give it a rest. Where majority of their revenue comes from what? Their services now. So again, most people don't see the vision. Most people don't understand. And quite hard to tell with companies like Apple, which don't disclose their vision a lot of times, especially when they're forward looking, they don't tell you what they're going to do. <laughs> Elon Musk tells you what he's going to do. It's like you're fly on the wall in the drawing board. You get to hear the designer and because he actually is a designer. He's also an engineer and you get to hear everything unravel before it unravels. You get to hear the progress. You get to hear what they're thinking of and what they're cooking up. And so you get that insider's information like no other CEO can provide because one, they're not a part of those departments. And two, that's just not part of their company and business and what they do. They don't disclose the information about what they're researching and developing. But Tesla and Elon does. And so when a lot of people say Elon doesn't deliver, what they're lacking of understanding is if you set in the same design studio as the Apple, if you set in the same design studios as Amazon, you would learn that there's so many projects that they spoke about, they tried and attempted, like phones, 
that didn't work out. But since Elon puts everything on Twitter for the most part, you hear it all. And so therefore, when some projects don't mature, they're like, oh, well, he just lies. He doesn't deliver. And it's like, you just don't get it. That's what happens on the drawing board. Things get researched and developed and they don't come to mass production. Imagine building a house. Most builders buy bricks from one supplier, windows from another, and hire separate contractors for plumbing and electrics. But what if one company did it all? That's vertical integration. And it's a strategy our three tech titans have mastered in their own unique ways. Let's start with Tesla. They're not just assembling cars. They're making the batteries, developing the software, and even building the factories to produce their vehicles. It's like they're mining the clay, firing the bricks, and laying them too. This approach gives Tesla unprecedented control over their supply chain and product development. For instance, by developing their own batteries, Tesla has managed to reduce battery costs by over 50% since 2010. That isn't just cost cutting, it's innovation that directly impacts the affordability and the range of their vehicles. And therefore- Yeah, you know, see that reduction. And see, no, any, not any company can do that. Even real estate investors can't do that. So you just can't say, oh, well, they reduced it by 50%. What's the big deal? That vertical integration is a huge play. And it's something that Tesla has that's similar to the companies that increased by 190K percent. It, it increased like Apple. It has increased like Amazon. And that vertical integration does a lot for a company. It allows you to control things. And it's okay for it. REVs and Tesla vehicles to lose a margin or get smaller margins. It doesn't mean that it's the end of the world. It means that despite the macroeconomics, like the higher interest rates or the cyclical nature of people purchasing vehicles, that we still have a wiggle room and a lot, the most actually, to be quite honest. The most out of all cars on the planet, ICE and otherwise. And so it's very interesting that as we move into vertical integration and we get some understanding of it, you will understand that this is one of many Tesla's strong suits. Now, everyone loves that heat Tesla, even despite their vertical integration. And I'm going to get a pause and I'm going to see you guys on the next video. And we're going to continue this great video that's showing you what's similar between giants and juggernauts like Apple and Amazon. and a small old company like Tesla. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Like, share, subscribe, and please clock in for the next episode when it drops. It's going to be part two, and we're going to finish out this video because there's a lot of good content. And this is the information that many of you guys are missing. I'm not worried about the day-to-day -day news. I'm not worried about Twitter. I'm worried about digging and diving into the finer details of what defines Tesla as a good company and what it needs or already has to become a great company. And I invest in between. See you guys in the next one. And again, this is not financial advice. Normies do not come after me. Peace.